Hello everybody, this is Prophet Cynthia Thompson and I'm so happy that you guys are with me tonight. Um, I want to take a moment and invite all of my, my Facebook friends and family. I can't see who's coming on. I want to be able to say hi to the people that are coming on. And so I want to give you a moment that you can come on and um, come on and share. I need you to share. Um, I don't come on Facebook page live just to, just to talk. I, I'm not that type of a prophet. I am truly uh, the one who's called to govern, guard, and guide. God has given me an assignment um, over my life as one to be an instructor in the prophetics. Um, I'm a teacher, I'm a true teacher, I'm a teacher to my bone, and I also make sure that I take serious my job duties and my responsibility as one that's just not apostle, a prophet, but also an apostle. I do speak out of the apostolic dimensions, and so God has given me the ability to govern over certain things, and I'm very careful, you know, how I say things and how I do things. Tonight, I have the prophetic team here with me, our ancestors from our church. We're getting ready for our intensive, and today the Lord was just speaking and downloading things in my spirit, and I needed to make sure that I share this, not just with us here and preparing for this intensive, but I need you to hear what the heavens are saying. Um, I need you to be in tune always, all of the students all over the world. We got a team of people who are truly prophets and prophetic types, and we got apostles that are all over the globe. We have people that we have relationships we've connected to. I want you to know I am not a novice in what I do. I've had a school for the last one to 11 years, courses online. Um, I've written a book called The Power of the Prophetic Mindset. We get ready to bring out volume two. A workbook is also with it. Um, I have had hands laid on. I have been authenticated. I have been validated by man and by the heavens. And so I take my job very, very, very serious. And I want to take a moment to share some things with you because I believe that God wants to speak. So I need you to take a moment and just share. Just begin to share. Just begin to click those shares and send those hearts because I believe I got some revelation um, with this prophetic team tonight. We're getting ready here in Deerfield Beach, Florida to get ready for our apostolic and prophetic intensive that will be held August 2nd through the 5th. And I need to download some things tonight and just share. I, I believe, guys, that we are in an incredible time. You know, I, I believe that when God spoke to me and gave me the title of this particular intensive, he said it would be called uh, the new era of apostleship. The new era of apostleship. I need y'all to, to get on. I wish I could say hi, but I want to say hi. I can't see the names that are coming up on the screen and who's tuning in and who's wanting to share and who's with me. But I thank God that you're coming in and I pray that you keep coming in and let's keep sharing. Let's take this as far as it can go. Um, we speak out of this place. We've created a hub for the prophetic. And the prophetic is not just about prophesying, okay? The prophetic houses the spiritual and the supernatural dimensions. Everything that is involved with Jesus Christ comes out of the prophetic. And so sometimes we have locked things in because we get confused with words and terminology just simply because we're not very, very versed and educated on some things. And I wanted to share with you tonight and just let you know that we're in a new era, a new dispensation. God is downloading some fresh things. There are fresh revelations. I, I believe the Lord was speaking to me all day and sharing some things with me concerning the glory dimension and how we must ascend. He said that there was going to be a release even to night as we came in here to pray with the prophetic team and the intercessors that were here. God said that there will be a release, that we will go forth in this house and begin to set in place for the next level glory. There is a next level glory. Somebody need to say next level glory. Next there is a level next glory. level glory that is coming into the earth now. There is a fire of the glory that is hitting the earth now. I'm telling you, it's housing in that glory. It has its own economy. It has its own wealth streams. It has its own manifestations of miracles. There is a new level of glory that is coming on the earth and it's packing fire, the fire of God that will burn up everything that is unclean. God is talking about these being the days of purifications purifications so I, I want you to go ahead and share share I'm going to give you a few more moments I think it's 823 I said 818 you know I want to wait on all the people that sometimes they are late and I don't want them to miss this moment of revelation so take time out and share share with every person you know who 
who has the anointing on their lives. They may be dreams and visions that they're having. People are being awakened. We are in days where there are great awakenings happening because people are having dreams and visions that they have no interpretations for. And there are those of us who've been called to instruct and teach people how to know dreams and visions. God is speaking and he's using everything, everything in the earth to speak to us through and with. And so there is nothing off limits when God wants to speak. He'll lay you down because you're too busy in the day and God will override your persona, he'll override your ego, and he'll begin to download straight into your spirit man what it is that he's trying to communicate from heavens into the earth. And so he was speaking to me today and I wanted to share some things. Go ahead and share. Um, all of our prophetic students, sons and daughters, I welcome you from all over um, where you are, all over the globe. I have sons and daughters all over the place. I thank God for all of you, and I thank God for our partners. I have prophetic team members and leaders and apostolic gatekeepers, those that are signing on with me. I have some that's getting ready to come, major generals, guys. I want to be here with us. These are um, um, apostolic warriors. Come on, they are governors in the realms of the spirit. And they're going to be here with us. And we want you to be a part of what's going to take place. It's not good enough to sit at home and say, I'm it." The people in the days of Jesus Christ, when they knew apostles were walking, those apostles had things in their mantles that cause things to happen in the now. In other words, when you engage yourself or you encounter apostolic, I'm talking about God's apostles, not people that put a title on themselves and don't occupy an office. I'm talking about God's apostles and God's prophets. When you are now able to encounter those mantles, they shift atmospheres. In other words, they begin to change every circumstance around your life and bring into your life the now of what you've been asking God for. And you can't just stay at home. The Bible says they left everything. When they heard about Jesus coming to cities, they will leave. They left days and start walking if they knew he was gonna be anywhere near them. They made their business to get. If they said, if I can just touch, the woman that was saying, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, they made themselves get in position to get what it was they needed from the master. And so it's so important that when we see the gathering, um, govern governmental gatherers that are coming together, we should get in place because there's something that God is gonna legislate out of the heavens that has not hit it yet. And so when we start seeing these gatherings, we should do it. So I wanted to share with you tonight, if you guys are on and you're ready, you guys are ready tonight. I have a few of the, um, the team here with us that we're praying and getting this place saturated and ready with. And I wanted to share this word tonight. I believe that in this dispensation, God is shaking up stuff because we're in the days of kingdom. We in the days are, are, are pure, glorious manifestations. And we're going to see the fivefold move in the earth like we've never seen before because we're in those days where God is setting his government. He's setting his government in place. And so in these days, um, God has been speaking to me about these apostolic gatekeeper, and he's been talking to me. I, I want you to put this out there everywhere. He's been talking to me now about these apostolic women, uh, uh, apostolic women. It's going to be important for you to understand what's happening in the last days and why God has, has been having women on his mind to, to raise up women. We've been seeing a lot of women come forth that have had apostolic anointings on their lives. We, we've been seeing these women, like where they're coming from, God is not uh, concerned about gender. He's looking for wounds, say wounds. Whoa. He's looking for wounds that are ripe and ready for him to lay down what he's about to do in the new now. Because there is a new now. And so he's been speaking to me about these apostolic women. I want to talk about that for just a few moments because I'm a woman and I'm an apostolic woman. And sometimes we have seen in our society that there has been such gender bias and what it is we need to do and what it is God wants to get accomplished and he wants to use vessels to do it with. Sometimes we've had blockers, okay, that have been in the earth because simply they don't like the package that the message is in. Yeah. And God is really dealing with this in this days as he's tearing down all the gender bias conversations and all the things that we have um, separated ourselves into and caused other things to be left out when those are the things God has called to be a part of what it is he's doing. And he's raising up some powerful women in these days as well as men. I'm not discrediting men. I'm a woman who has a husband. I'm not an unsubmitted wife. I am a wife that is submitted to my husband who's a true apostle. We serve, we serve together as team horses. 
We serve together as team horses. We complement each other. I'm not trying to complicate him. I'm not trying to compete with him, but we complement each other. And because I respect so much um, the office, I'm able to be mature enough to override gender, just like the Holy Ghost, to get a job accomplished when it needs to get accomplished. And so he's been speaking about these things. So I wanted to take a moment to download what the Lord has been stirring in my spirit concerning this new era of apostleship, this new era of apostleship. There is a dispensational shift that has already happened. Now, I know a lot of people have been talking about the shift, the shift, the shift. There is a dispensational shift that has already happened. And, and God began to declare at the beginning of this year, we know that God began to declare that we had entered into new beginnings. 2018, he said we had entered into new beginnings, meaning a new era, which um, really means this. A new era means this. It means we have come to the end of a beginning. That's what new era means. When we hear God talks about end times, end times talk about the ending of a beginning. When we talk about a new era, we're dealing with the words reset. God is saying, I brought you to the end to bring you to a beginning. And whenever you come through an end, God always make it now that what he said at the beginning, it shall be fulfilled at the end. Because the cycles in God do not break. Y'all hear me? The cycles in God, I said the cycles in God do not break. Okay, he is a God that works off seasons and cycles. Okay, and it doesn't matter how our calendar runs, he doesn't run with our calendar course. He runs a different course. And so when God has a thought, that thought is never broken until it's completely fulfilled. And when it is filled, he starts, he starts all over again. Okay, so I want you to know that we come to this ending of a new beginning. Okay. So when we talk about dispensation, let's hear this to the students that are listening. When we talk about dispensation, a dispensation is more than just a period in time. It's more than just a period in time. It is an economy. So it deals with um, distribution of allotment. It deals with allocated funds and financing. It is prosperity, wealth, and riches. So every time we come into the ending of something, God resets it to reboot it for a new generation that things have been set forth for, okay? There has been an old dispensation that where we have seen and we have felt the depletion of many things. We have been dried spiritually. We have places that have the name of Jesus on it, but Jesus ain't in it. We have places that are saying that they are the spirit house of this, but ain't no spirit of Christ in it. There has been depletions of banks. We have been economically depleted. We have been spiritually depleted. But God, when he got ready to bring his people out of bondage and set them into a new place, he went and got a prophet named Moses. And if I can just park on Moses for a little bit, because Moses had a mother who was married to a priest, and God hid Moses inside her womb. As a matter of fact, he hid Moses and put him in the place of prosperity, that when it was time for him to bring a generation into their own allotment, he told Moses, I'm going to use you to be a, dis um, a dis um, disperser of my allotment, because he was a dispensational prophet. In other words, those that God is raising up now, you've got to know your purpose for why you are called in the earth and what is significant, significant to a new generation that is on the horizons and what God has given you. Every idea, hear me, every idea, every witty invention. He said he will download technologies from heaven. Everything that is coming into your life now is coming for the reset and the reboots of a new economy for a now generation. So are y'all hearing me? So we talk about the, uh, dis the dispensation and what it deals with. So God allocates to every generation its economy. And he assigns apostles to make sure it is measured for proper placement. He assigned apostles. That's why he said lay it at the feet of the apostles. By the time we see kingdom coming, we begin to see that God set those in place that could measure out what he was putting in the earth for proper placement. Because before that, people was taking everything they could to get what they want. And that's why we're heralding the sound of apostleship. Why? Because God is making sure in this last era, in this new, what we will see in this, mad, this, this dispensation that is coming now, he's making sure that this allotment is measured properly. He's making sure. He's making sure. He's making sure that everybody has equal portions to what it is they're supposed to have. And I'm not just talking about money. Okay, he's making sure, he's raising up those that have been given stewardship over all things. We have different things that God has given us stewardship in, and that's why we need to fivefold. 
because all of our mantles don't really operate the same. And I know we see people prophesy, and I know we know we have apostles, but there is different legislation that comes over commanding officers and governmental officials. Some are called to the city, some are called to the region, some are called to the state, some are called to the country, and then there's those that are called globally to the nations. And depending on what God has called you, that's how he equips you. Y'all hear me? I hope y'all are with me so far. Hey, everybody, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for being with me. I just needed to download and drop a few things, and it was not enough for me to just share it in this room, but I needed to get it out here to you because there's too many people that have questions. It's too many people that are hitting me up and asking me things. People are having dreams with no interpretations, and heaven is speaking. And what you are dreaming right now, I want to take a moment and prophesy and tell you this. What you are dreaming, there are some of you listening right now, and you've been having dreams, and sometimes you're having the dreams back to back. Some of you are seeing things and the only reason why someone can't affirm it sometimes in the earth because they've not gone in the spirit where you've gone to get it. you got to deal with in these days, you're going to have to find yourself connecting with people who are in the spirit dimensions that can see beyond the darkness. Because when we get in dark days, we can't see. And so now you're having dreams and you're having visions. Can I tell you right now that that which God is showing you is marked for what is to come? Sometimes you can't share your dream with everybody. Sometimes you cannot. Joseph was having dreams and he couldn't tell his brothers. His brothers came along. God was speaking to him about rulership and dominion and taking over and authority. He didn't understand that when he got the word of God, he was going to have to go through the pit. And that is what's happening with us right now. God has been speaking to me some things because we've not understood that when the word comes you to you, it's going to come to you in one state. Right. But it's going to be fulfilled to you in another state. Your name may be what it is right now, but when the word finishes working in your life, you will become exactly what God called you to be. That word will absolutely work you through the process to become the name that God says you are. If God says you are a millionaire, then I promise you everything that's coming in your life is helping to perfect you to become one. So by the time God releases millionaire status out of the heavens over your life, you have now had a mentality for millionaire. You have walked yourself into a mega perspective. You have made yourself. Whatever God has spoken to you and he's given you a dream and a vision about, don't get yourself unraveled because you're processing to get in position for what God has promised. Amen? Amen. And so now, let me finish saying this. Uh, uh, so God has allotted to every generation this economy and he's assigned apostles to make sure it is measured for proper placement. Again. Prophets are empowered, hear this students, prophets are empowered by the Lord to release and impart the ability to prosper to others. So now you have apostles that make sure they are able to distribute God's economy properly. You have prophets, they're team horses, you have prophets who have been empowered by the Lord to release and impart the ability to prosper to others, okay? So in other words, I want you to hear this. It is illegal for prophets of the Lord to show up and not release or empower you to prosper. It is illegal. It is illegal. It is illegal. You can write that down. It is illegal. It is illegal. Because what God assigns and he puts in the mantle of a prophet, I'm talking about the Lord's prophets, not the ones that name themselves prophets. I'm talking about the Lord's prophets. Those prophets have been given from God an empowerment that is given to make sure you are released to prosper. What am I saying? The word of God speaks of God giving that power to get wealth, right? He said, I've given you power to get wealth. So God can't be talking only about money. He can't be talking about money because we understand that you can have money and still be miserable. So he can't be talking about money and he can't just be talking about buildings and Bentleys. You understand? So he has to be talking about wealth and what is wealth? Wealth is more than money. Wealth deals with the wholeness of your being. Walk well, deal with you being sound in mind, uh, having peace in your spirit, being able to sleep at night. But wealth also deals with resources that comes with influence. Wealth deals with resources that comes with influence. So God is not trying to just give you money. He's trying to release resources and influence into your life. So what am I saying? Once you encounter the mantle of a prophet of the Lord, I said, once you encounter the mantle of a prophet of the Lord, that person, that mantle has to leave you. Listen, they have to leave you in a better position than what you were before they showed up. That is the release. 
That is to release the prosper. In other words, when a prophet shows up in your life, they create a window that you can see opportunities to see your way out and see your way into what God said. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. God, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Robo sakataya. Why am I saying that? Because, because it needs to be said. Because there are too many people that are walking around saying, thus says the Lord. And then there are too many prophets that are walking around taking and not releasing. Yeah. There's too many people that are saying they're prophets. And God said the days will come. He prophesied that the days will come. You remember the word of the Lord? He prophesied. He said the days will come that I'm going to raise up responsible Responsible sheep, for shepherds, responsible men and women of God that won't just take, 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 take the best portion for themselves, but they will release an empowerment over the people. Because this generation, what God is doing, when he talks about allotment and he talks about this reset and he talks about economy, God is needing you to transfer out of your life what he's given you into the releasing it into the lives of others. That keeps the economy of God flowing. And that's just not about money. I release peace unto you. Amen. Do you have peace? You should be able as a prophet to carry peace. Because the testimony of every prophet, is the, of the ministry of every prophet is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And when you are standing in that ministry of Jesus Christ, bearing his testimony, you are carrying within you that which God wants to release to his people. And so you must know that as a prophet, that when you show up, you're releasing if it's peace. What do the people need? Is it joy? Is it joy? What is it that they need? You have an empower to release that, to bring them into the better state. Prosperity, wellness, wholeness, peace, joy. Nothing missing, nothing broken out of the glory dimension. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Okay, so listen to this. Ephesians 4 and 11. Let me just give this to you. Look what it says. Ephesians 4 and 11 to 13. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints. God said, I made some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He says this in 13, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. What is he saying? I want to share this because he's saying to us, until we come into the unifying, until we grow in love and oneness in God, faith, just believing, until we come a body of believers, not doubters, but a body of believers. He's saying, until you come into the unification of the faith. What is the faith? The faith is the ministry of Jesus Christ. Until you are made unified in oneness and love in your faith in God. So he said, I've given them that for that reason. And then he says, end of the knowledge of the Son of God. In other words, faith brings you into the glory dimension. Once you have exercised your faith, okay, and we have been unified, there is a glory of God that comes over us. That brings us into the knowing, into the knowledge. When you come into the glory dimension of knowing God, you don't need faith. Because in the glory dimension, it is God. Amen. You don't need healing. Healing is, you are healing. Are you hearing me? You don't need healing. You don't need to pray for healing. You just need to tell yourself, be healed. You need to speak to your workers and tell them, be. You need to tell yourself, tell your mind, tell, your, tell everything to be. We speak out of the glory dimension. Prophesy things to be now. Why? Because when you have unified yourself into the oneness of God, and the mission and the mandate of God, you are able now to come into a glory dimension that you know who God is, and you don't have to believe. People say, I'm believing. You don't have to believe, you just have to be. Because you carry something now that God has released in your life to release it into others. He wants that in the atmosphere. And so it said, until we come into that perfect man, into the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So listen to this. The apostles' role in the fivefold is to build the apostolic, an apostolic house that serves the totality of the New Testament dispensation that represents the full complement of the Ephesian 411's offices. So an apostolic house, or the role of an apostle's house, is to have the fivefold in it. The fivefold has to serve the totality of the New Testament dispensation. We are in the New Testament dispensation from the time of Christ. And what we are seeing now as we've come into now this new era, which is still the dispensation of Christ, 
We have stepped into a new era and a new dispensation because there was a new economy for a new generation. Are y'all hearing me? There's a new economy, and that's why he's wanting us to understand that. This is a dispensation of fullness, the Lord told me. He said, this is a dispensation of fullness. Why? Because it is the time of mega, meaning measure, mega meaning metron or metrodome. God is measured. We in the fullness. We're in the fullness of time where God is measured. Why? Because that is the role of the five-fold ministry to stretch us into fullness. And so some of us have been feeling here this. Some of us have been feeling uh, uh, different types of things in our lives. And we've not understood that God has been stretching us through pain and disappointment. Why? Because we're in the fullness. We've come into the fullness. We can prophesy and herald the apostolic or the apostles or even tap into the apostolic dimension and not understand the stretching that is required by God in order to accommodate what is coming out of heaven. There is a stretch. There is a stretch. There is a stretch. Somebody in the God is stretching you. He's not killing you. He's stretching you. Why? Because he's laying down more in you. He's measuring you. He told them to measure out another thousand. Why? You're being stretched to be able to contain more. There is more God needs to put in you. Heaven has to get this release out of it to bring it into the earth. And God is stretching you. You can't stay at this same little prayer place. You can't stay with them five little people. You can't stay in that little house you've been in. You're going to have to stretch yourself to believe. Why? Because you've got to step into the dimension of the glory. The glory is I'm not believing for the house. I just go get the house. I'm telling you what the glory is. Yeah. The glory is I don't have to keep asking everybody to pray for me. I'm telling you I am the healing of the Lord. I came to bring healing into the earth. You got to know the difference when you step into the glory dimension. God said I'm stretching you to a place that you begin to grab hold to the promises of God. That you become an epistle written by men. That they can see the tangible manifestations of God upon your life. That when you show up you are the book of Jesus. Read me. I know he's a healer, because I am healing to you. Right. So you got to know who you are right now in Christ, and especially the prophets. I'm talking to the prophets. I'm talking to the prophets. I'm talking to the prophets. Why? Because God never meant for us to stay on prophesying to people based out of earth affairs with no heaven agenda attached to it. Never, never. So many people are using familiar spirits to prophesy. We believe that people who prophesy and can read addresses and phone numbers and tell you what color your house is and where you live, we believe that that is the highest form of prophecy. And I come to tell you as a chief prophet that is not the highest form of prophecy. Those things may be part of what we do and our job responsibility. And though we're able to see things that are in the soulless realm and tell you because what operates with prophets, one of the greatest things that they have is the spirit of discernment. So many times people can discern, they're discerning, oft times we're just operating out of gifts, but you can't confuse gifts with mantles. Because a person can prophesy to you and nothing never happened. They're just reading out of the scope of your life. Witches can do that. But when you encounter a true prophet, they bring your future into your now. So they're not just gonna tell you what is going on in your life. That's the difference between a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. People give you knowledge of your situations, but they don't have nothing in a blueprint to make you see your way out. Apostles don't, a prophets don't just give you a word that contains knowledge, they give you a word of wisdom. That's why he said go to the prophets and ask them where the donkeys. Ask them why? Because they produce out of them a map. They give you prophetic strategies to come through. So there has to be counsel and a prophet. You can't tell me you're a prophet and your house is towed up and your life is shipwrecked and you can't give counsel to nobody. No, you might be a gift, but you're not an officer. Are y'all hearing me? The difference, the difference, the difference. I just want to make a, a point of that for a difference because I see too many things. I hear too many things going on out here, just all over social media, everywhere. We got to set some things in order because there's a generation watching us. And if we don't put these first things in place, if we don't shift this stuff and turn it back right side up, we are now giving people instructions that are in error. And we're going to be held accountable as we sit and say nothing. Because we got a millennial generation that I so love, that I'm so, so excited about because they have energy and passion, but they have no knowledge of the true dimensions of the spirit. They don't have this type of knowledge. They don't have word interpretations. They don't understand intelligence of the spirits, but they want power and they're running in power and we got to be careful. Because power, there is a power that mimics the power of God. 
And we got to be careful that we get caught up in mimics, counterfeits, that we are finding ourselves contending with. But we don't contend with counterfeits. We don't find ourselves being going back and forth with people who are mimicking and copycatting. No, no, no. When the authentic shows up, the, the false shuts down. Right. Because there is no such thing as a false prophet. You are the prophet or you not. Right. What is a false prophet? It's a lying spirit. That's all it is. It's meaning you saying that God said and God never said. So you call yourself a prophet? No. That is nothing but an echoing sound. And it has nothing that is relative of heaven. It has no enforcement out of heaven with it to cause things to happen. Things don't shift. Things aren't changing. And there are too many people walking around saying, where are the prophets? Where are the prophets? Well, there are prophets that are here in the land. And we're about to see prophets come forth like we've never seen before. We're about to see apostolic prophets. These are not just any old prophets. These are governmental prophets. They are carrying with them. Out of their mouth, they legislate. They arbitrate. They negotiate. They are walking the terrain of heaven and causing things from the heavens to be made manifested in the earth. I'm talking about prophets who are able to create a portal that God can bring things through and get things done in the earth. Yeah. These are the kind of prophets God are raising up in these days. It is time for us to see who God said he is by our lives becoming living epistles. Amen. And so why do we need a new era of apostleship? Why God is raising up and now we've seen now people who we've heard like never before. I'm an apostle, I'm an apostle, I'm an apostle. We went on different, different, different uh, uh, we come into different times where we've seen the release of different things. I, I believe one of the things God told me that he took us through some things to activate the fivefold. There was an era that we saw that we went into, uh, uh, um, uh, everybody was, um, 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 uh, preaching. We had uh, uh, revivals. We had the evangelists that was activated at one time. We had people now, we saw the big thing of shepherds. There was lording over people, the strong shepherding. That was activated. God gone through and activated all of his fivefold offices. The last activation came, we're seeing now, we saw the move of the prophets. Everybody was a prophet. Everybody in the 80s, 90s, everybody was a prophet. God was activating the mantle of the prophet and he was causing people to now become tickled by a gift because he was going to release a real regime of mantles. And so people got caught up in just people seeing and saying. And a prophet's mantle does more than just prophesy and see and say. Amen. But he wishes all of us to prophesy. What is it that you can see that heaven is saying? And you say it out of your mouth. That is called the prophecy of heaven. That doesn't make you a prophet. Okay? So many people are doing that. This is not can we get something to plug me in? Because this cord, I need a new cord. This is not working. I'm about to run out of juice. Give me a few moments. I just need to download. I just want to teach this to you for a moment. I pray you guys that are tuned in to Facebook, people that are watching YouTube. I pray you guys that are here with us tonight. We got the prophetic team again with us here. People who have calls and who submitted those callers, who have been in school, who have set themselves. People say, well, I don't need no education. Well, everybody look in, in the word of God, there has been a proper succession. I don't see God use everybody who got hands laid on them. He said, lay hands on them and suddenly they sat in the school, Samuel ex um, ex established one of the first schools that we see that came out of the the Old Testament that God made it available to open and usher in us into this new covenant in Christ through Jesus Christ. Those announcements were made and they began to chronicleize things and put things back in proper perspective because every so often we lose our way. And so we have to bring people back into proper order. There has to be a governance. There has to be. God talks about prophets' jobs, hear me, is to govern, to guard, and to guide. One of my mentors taught me that years ago, years ago, that one of the jobs of a, a prophet is to govern, guard, and guide. And so we must make sure we know what that is. We're governing, we're guarding, and we're guiding another generation, a new dispensation, until the days of the Lord, until he returns. Okay. So I told you that God has been stretching you through all of these disappointments. God has been trying to get you ready, get your womb, to be able to lay down something in it. Um, and so he's been talking about this stretch. He's been talking to me about... go to a woman when men sometimes lose their way and they get nervous and can't find what it is God is saying. Sometimes they get caught up in the wrong things. God began to seek out the wounds. He's looking for wounds. When Jesus wanted to come on the earth, he said, give me a wound. 
He's looking for wound. Things have to come out of the heavens into the earth through a wound. Men have wounds too. They are men with wounds. We are women with wounds. They all have wounds. But there are times that we come apart, that we look in scripture, and we see God hide things. And people can't see it. He'll hide it. He'll tuck it away in the bellies of people. He'll tuck it away in your mind. There are ideas, creative thinkings that are going on now. Some things have been tucked away. You have not shared with nobody. God said, don't even say this. He told Paul, he took him on the side of the, um, in the, um, in the, um, on the island. And God spoke to him. And he said, what I'm getting ready to tell you, you can't share with nobody. It's called revelation. Right. Why? Because when you're living in days of revelation, you can't share it because a generation is not ready to receive because they have not been birthed through the process where they're able to have a womb to hold the revelation of God. So he'll say, hold that till I raise up a generation that is spiritual enough to take in what you're saying. And so we in days where God is raising up a generation that is so sharp, cutting edge, they are ready to take in these revelations because what, how we know we're ready? Because technology has confirmed that we are moving in another time. We are moving with a different type of acceleration. Things are happening quick. You can snap, uh, put your finger on a button and get anything you want to get. And God is saying, I'll never let a computer out, outrun me. Because there's things coming out of heaven now that is moving with such speed because we're days of glory. And you can't measure the light and the dimension of the glory. It's too vast. You can measure time and light years in the earth, but you can't measure the glory dimension because it's too vast and it moves too fast. As soon as they think they got it, they can't contain it. Right. And that's when we come into the glory dimension that God is talking about now. That's how quick things are going to be moving. He says, a bleeding of an eye, we're going to see Christ return. And so, um, are you all getting this? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm about to close this up and finish this out, and I'll finish with you guys, but I want to make sure you guys get this download, okay? So can nobody understand stretching more than a woman? Because when a woman gets pregnant with a baby, the baby comes into her womb and it starts moving everything. It moves her kidneys, her lungs, her liver. The baby starts moving everything, saying, make room. And what makes us know that it's time for us to give birth to something is because it gets too big and we can't carry it no more. Every time you know you're in a time where God is about to, when you know you're in a time where God is about to give birth to something and he's barring your womb to get it done, you go through seasons of frustration, your appetite change. You know what I'm saying? You, you begin, sometimes people ankle swell. Some, sometimes your body begins to speak to you. Everything in you has to make an adjustment for what it is God is impregnating you with. And when God get ready to raise up apostles and apostolic people, he begins to impregnate you with heaven's agenda. And he starts saying, your life is going to get uncomfortable. I'm telling you right now, sometimes we have misread the diagnosis of our life, just like many people who've gotten pregnant. Have you ever known people who've gotten pregnant? They've been pregnant six, seven months, and even though they were pregnant, they were so, they were so detached from their body. They were so detached from knowing the symptoms of what it took to be pregnant. They were so, some women say, I never had a symptom. Everything just went on normal. How many of you know sometimes God can't even let you see what you're carrying? He'll hide it in you when he gets ready to do stuff. He'll say, I got to get you pregnant. I don't even want you to know because if I tell you, you're going to kill it. Y'all not hearing me. There are some things that are coming. I'm telling you, there are things that are being birthed now. He told me to come tonight because we had to create in this place. There are apostolic wounds. That God is getting ready to give birth to a new era's agenda. A new era's allotment is being released. There are witty ideas, technologies from heaven that are being downloaded. Business, entrepreneurship. There are things that's being reset right now. That is God's agenda. And he's saying, I'm looking for wounds that are right and that are ready. Who understand the spiritual dimensions of the prophetic. That's not walking around trying to copycat, get over, slide in. But they are authentic because they've gone through the process. And it has qualified their wounds. To be able to handle what God has kept, what God is releasing, and what he wants to get accomplished in the earth. I want y'all to hear me. Please hear me, people who are tuned in. Because some of you have been frustrated. Some of you have been trying to figure out. We are no longer there, but we are not where we should be. And we've been in the hallways of lives. And some of you have misdiagnosed what's going on in this season. You have been giving up, wanting to run, wanting to jump ship, wanting to stop doing Jesus, going to church. You want to do all kinds of stuff because your appetite is changing. Why? Because you're pregnant with heaven's agenda. Amen. 
God is downloading things. He said, I want you to give birth to something now that the earth has never seen. Why? Because you're in days of glory where the revelations of God. What is one of the signs that lets you know that you have ascended to a higher place, to the next level of glory, is that you get revelation and you don't live off information. That is one of the greatest signs. And this revelation that comes to you is coming because you got something that nobody around you know. That is the revelation of heaven. When you're able to download what nobody on your job ever heard, nobody in your company ever seen, you're getting ideas. There was no sewing machine until somebody laid somebody down, gave them a night vision, they woke up and created blueprints for a sewing machine. There was never a chair until God laid somebody down, told them I want to design something for people to sit on. They got up and they drew out a chair. There was never a door, never a bucket, never a clothes for us. But God began to download to people witty ideas because he needed to take care of a generation that was coming. And we are moving in the days of acceleration where this generation is on such cutting edge and you cannot stay at the stuck place you've been. It's time for you to recognize there's your water is breaking and there is time for something to come forth. What tells us the apostolic mantles are merging and gathering? What tells us that it's time for us to get revelation so we can get out of our frustration is because the mantles are gathering and they're creating a birthing place to bring forth what heaven agenda is. Amen. It's telling us it is. Why? Because you're frustrated. You ever seen a woman get ready to have a baby? And my God, when it's the closer for her, she's miserable. What tells me you are ready to give birth? You're miserable. Can't nobody stand. You can't stand yourself. Come on. You are so fat. Your legs done swollen up. Come on. Your head, everything done got big. Everything is telling you, I got to release this. A frustrated prophet. Let me go here for a moment. One of the things that cause prophets, they get become frustrated is when they are carrying something and there's nowhere to release it. That's called prophetic frustration. You're carrying something and you have nowhere to release it. Why? Because we've had to hold what it was God gave us until he got everything in the womb right to give birth. He's been preparing a generation for what you got. You couldn't even release that to the last people you were with, the last house you were in, come on, the last five people you sat around. You can't release it. He said, I got to change your manager. Come on. I got to change the people, your supervisors. Why? Because the one you had couldn't even handle what it was you got. When God got ready to bless Abraham, he said, I'm going to make your name great. When he got ready to make Abraham's name great, he told him, he said, the things you're going to have to do, Abraham, hear this. You're going to have to leave your father's house, your kinsmen, and your relatives. Wow. Wow. Because you can't go great with the people you're attached to. Lord, help me. Why? Because there's something I need to birth out of you, Abraham. And if you stay around those people, they're going to kill it every time it comes. Every time you feel a symptom, they're going to tell you, tell them nothing wrong with you. Just go take this pill. And by the time you take what they're giving you, what they're feeding you, what they're wanting you to drink in the spirit, it's going to abort your mission. And there's some of us who sat around people because we misdiagnosed the time we're in. We're misdiagnosing the pain that we're feeling. We're misdiagnosing the disappointments. Why? Because God is stretching you. Why? Because he has something you got to give birth to triples. Triplets. Oh Quadruplets. How, how far can you stretch? God is saying, I've held you back so. I, when you come forth, I'm telling you, you're coming forth. And I'm not just going to give you double, I'm going to give you triple. Oh my God. So stretch. How far can you go? Because some of this stuff is going to be on the heels of the other. As soon as you look around and you get burnt up, something else is going to come on the heels of it. And then something else is going to come on the heels of it. Why? Because God has to release everything that this generation needs to accomplish what it has to do. Why? He has to get the sound out of the atmosphere that measures up to heaven's pers perspectives, to heaven's agenda, because he's on his way back. And he has to make sure the earth is walking in fullness to create an atmosphere for the return of the coming of the Lord. And so some of us have been frustrated. And God began to speak to me today. He said, tell the church that I'm trying to birth something out of my prophets. I'm trying to birth something out of an apostolic generation. I'm trying to birth something out of a prophetic people. And that's why you're frustrated. And that's why you're aggravated. And that's why nothing don't fit. And that's why nothing ain't working. And that's why you can't stand yourself. And that's why the pain's been in your life and it won't go away. He said, until you get through this process and you begin to recognize what I'm putting in your womb in this season, you'll never be able to bear down and push forth and give birth.
to what it is I call you to bring forth. So listen to this as I close this out. I pray y'all are getting this. I pray my audience on Facebook are getting this because I hear the Lord say, I'm about to birth out. I'm about to bring forth. I believe in this new era of apostleship as he's prepared apostolic uh, 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 wounds to get ripe and ready for these new ideas that he's bringing out of heaven. He's been getting wounds. He's been drawing bitterness out of us. I was looking up this scripture, uh, just talking about a few things, and I was looking up this scripture, and I'm going to move to this scripture. Uh, I'm in Jeremiah, I got to go here because I was looking up this, and the Lord began to speak to me about the end days and what was coming, and we're misdiagnosing what's happening in America. We don't even understand what's going on. We say we are prophets, but we're so busy trying to make sure our bills are paying and our house is kept, and this is bigger than your bills, your house. This is bigger than your friends and who like you and who don't like you. It's bigger than the churches that's calling you to speak and who let you go and who you need to uh, smile with and laugh with. It's bigger than that. God is saying that there is something that's ready to give birth out of heaven that's going to shake the foundations of the earth. And so what we've been feeling and all the discomforts, even from our current president, God has allowed. Listen to Jeremiah 9 and 12 because God told me this current president that was coming when he was going to be president, he told me he had a type and a shadow of a mantle that was like Nebuchadnezzar. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, mm -hmm, Nebuchadnezzar. He said, why? Because I know the king I need to put in place for the people I'm dealing with. Amen. And as wonderful and great as we think we are, we just haven't had enough fathers to come along to rebuke us and set us down. He said, where are the fathers? They're, they're the people to turn the hearts of the sons back to the fathers and the fathers to the sons. Some of this mess needs to be shut down, sat down, put on quiet, don't talk no more till you get purified and purged because we've allowed things to be released in the earth that bring in mixtures. We got mixtures. There's no purity of sound. So people are deceived because we don't, we're not sure. We're unclear because of the mixtures. And so Jeremiah 9, listen to this, 9 and 12, and I'm going to finish. It says this. I was going to give myself an hour, so I'm almost there. I thank y'all for tuning in for, um, live on Facebook. So Jeremiah 9, look what it says in 12. It says, who is the wise man who may understand this without any doubt? To whom has the mouth of the Lord spoken so that he may declare it? Why is the land ruined, laid wasted like a wilderness, so that no one passes through? My God. The Lord said, because they have turned away from my law, which I set before them and have not listened to and obeyed my voice, nor walked in accordance with it. But they have walked stubbornly after their own heart and after Baals, after their fathers taught them. As their fathers taught them. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed this, them, this people with wormwood and give them bitter poisonous water to drink. Wormwood, but when you look it up in the scripture, it talks about wormwood. It's mentioned eight times in the, in the Old Testament. It deals with a bitter herb. God is saying, I'm going to feed them bitter herbs. And I'm going to give them poisonous water. And if you look around again and you see Wormwood is mentioned in the New Testament. It's talking about a star that is named Wormwood. By the time this star is released, it talks about the judgments that are coming. It talks about the judgments. When you start hearing Wormwood and what God is prophesying and declaring, it was during the times of Jeremiah, Jeremiah's anointing and his call as a prophet that God raised up a man named Nebuchadnezzar. And he began to feed the people up with what they were. He said, this is bitter. He said, I'm going to tell you, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to feed these people. There's people that have gotten in the things of God. We have allowed the Baal worship to get into the house of God. We have gotten off. We have turned our back to idols. We have come to the place where we have become so rebellious. We are so narcissistic ourselves, full of pride, preaching the gospel. And God is saying, I'm going to serve something up to you that's going to show you who you are. And he's used people over and over again because the only thing that can come into office is yet God. God allows God God and so as you hear me, me me talking about this wormwood when you look at it in the revelation it talks about wormwood it talks about this star that will come in the days of judgment with the trumpets of sound that this thing will hit the earth called wormwood he's saying it's going to be it deals with embitteredness being embittered embittered some people can't get pregnant because they're too embittered nothing can live out of the waters of your womb because you've allowed your brokenness to make you bitter. And when you come into the last days, when things start becoming chaotic and you don't understand, that's when you've got to ascend to a higher place in God because you can no longer begin to keep your life at the place of what you can see. Habakkuk said, let me climb up into the watchtower so I can see what God is saying. 
There is something God is saying to us. And if we don't allow ourselves to ascend to a higher place in the prophetic to see what heavens is saying, we misdiagnosing what is happening. And we're allowing stuff to make us bitter instead of making us better. He said, this is making you bitter. The Bible says when this thing hit, it's going to cause a third of the earth, a third of the earth. Where people will have nothing to drink from. I'm telling you, these are days that we're coming into thirsty days. Where there is a loss for the pureness of the gospel. Where people are saying, where can I go and get a real meal and, and drink of something that's to satisfy me? That woman met Jesus at the well. She said, come, meet a man. He can give you water that you'll never thirst again. When water becomes bitter, nobody can drink it. And what we see concerning the scripture and concerning what I'm saying, I'm talking about what God is releasing in this hour. And there's a new era of apostleship that has been given the ability to manage and to govern and to establish and put in place for the new generations to come. What we're building now will be for 20 years. He's saying, I'm raising up apostolic gatekeepers that are going to be able to legislate with prophets and put into place my ideas, my perspectives. And I'm looking for wounds that's not bitter. I'm looking for waters that can house and not a door. I'm looking for people that won't jump ship and give up. I'm looking for people who can stand, stand and be stretched a little longer, why? And a little farther, why? Because I want to put something in you that you'll be able to deliver to a now generation that will never be able to back up on God. When Hannah got, was ready to have a baby, the Bible said God shut down her womb, why? Because she had to bring something forth that the earth had never seen. God was getting ready to reset these things. The priesthood was devoured. The prophetic were defiled. The kings were defiled. We're seeing governments defiled in these days. We're seeing the kings, leaders defiled. They are defiled. We are also seeing priests in the house defiled. We are seeing the prophetics defiled. And God said, when those days happen, call me Samuel. I'm getting now Hannah ready to go into the place of the altar and pray. Call for the wedding women. Yes. Call for women who will pray themselves yes. crazy. I'm looking for wounds that I can find that's not bitter through the brokenness of life, but they've gotten better. Are y'all hearing me? God wants wants you to get better and not bitter. He wants to put something in your womb. The Bible says Hannah was shut down. Nothing could come in. Nothing could go out. And God said, I lock you down. I hit you for a season. I wanted to prepare you and get your womb cultivated for what I needed to bring. He said, but you were releasing the wrong sign. Get from around those people. Stop saying that word. You are limited in your speech. You have no new sound in you. But what I want to cultivate is coming out of a sound of glory. I need you to get back on the altar and pray. I need you to get in a place where you can ascend to the heavens, tap into the glory dimension, so I can lay down a seed in your womb that will give birth to something great, says the Spirit of the Lord. I hope you hear me today. I am telling you, God has been trying to get you to a place, and you are misdiagnosing what's happening in your life. This pain, this disappointment is not about God not being with you. It is about God stretching you. He got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yes. He said, good. You tired? Good. You frustrated enough? You've come to the end of you? You can't work no more mimics and gimmicks and plans and schemes and plots? You can't, you cannot, and you know the people walk around trying to get over on folks. He said, you can't, you tired? All your cars, you done passed out. Everybody done asked you to speak. Ain't nobody asking you no more. You done did everything you can do. You tired, you're real, real tired. He said, good. You're right where I want you. Why? Because I need a womb that can give birth to heaven's agenda now. Why? Because I'm building apostleship. I'm building governing houses. Houses that will be epic centers. Houses that will be able to be a hub. That will be governing houses that will affect a whole city and a region. He said, I'm telling you what's coming out of these houses in these last days. He said, I've been getting, in a, getting them in a place because I'm gathering in those apostolic places, in those apostolic houses. I'm gathering a apostolic-minded people who have global perspective to reach nations that are not just concerned about us for and no more. He said, when you get an agenda and an idea and you begin to get, begin to get a vision and a plan that will affect the generations and nations that come, he said, now I can borrow your womb to give birth to something great because you are thinking too low and I was thinking better. Yes. I was thinking greater. He said, Abraham, leave. Hannah, shut up until I draw out of you and I create waters in your womb. Stop cursing your womb. Stop speaking all the mess that you've gone through back into the waters that what God is trying to bring out of you, you are boarding. 
You keep changing your mind, flipping and flopping. I'm going to do this, and you change your mind six weeks later, six months later. God's saying something else. No, he's not. You don't want to walk through the process. He's stretching you. Hear me, woman of God. Hear me, man of God. Hear me, old womb man. Hear me, old woman. Hear me, apostolic people. God is stretching your womb because a generation is thirsty. A generation is hungry. A generation is waiting for that idea, that winning invention. A generation is waiting for what you got to go and impact the nations, the region, the country. A generation is waiting for you. And I'll awaken you, gatekeeper. I'll awaken you. I'll awaken you. My time is about up, but I'll awaken you. I set charge over you. I apostolically send the word of God to you that you will not lay in comfort any longer. Can't you feel the baby kicking? Don't you feel the birthing pains? It is time for visions and dreams. I act new things in the spirit. It is time for books to come out of you. It is time for that was been lying in you. This baby is overdue. You can only go through the process of having a baby. There was a natural gestation process for you to bring forth and some of you have been pregnant too long. This baby been sitting in your womb too long and God said in this hour I'm going to release something in the earth that makes you so uncomfortable you can't do nothing but push this out. You can't do nothing but release this. Why? Wow, there's a release happening in the atmosphere and God said that release is making a demand of a release out of you. That you cannot stay in the condition you have been in. The nations are waiting to see you. People are wanting to know is God real. People are looking at your life on your job, trying to figure out, is there, does prayer really work? And God is saying, I'm going to use you, woman of God, on your job, in your cubicle, at your desk. They're getting ready to see a mighty move of God. I'm going to use you, man of God, at the gas station. I'm going to use you while you bag and bags at the supermarket. I'm going to use you. God is saying, I got a people that I'm about to raise up in this hour that has apostolic gate anointing. They have apostolic scope, they are highly prophetic, and they're about to give birth to that which was right and dormant on the inside of them. Amen. And so you may have been quiet for a season like Hannah. And God said, that's the wrong sound. I got to get these waters right. Why? Because we're in days of reset. When you come into a dark era, like it was in the days of Eli, when everything was going on, when prostitution was legal. When they sat in the temple and people turned their head as leaders and watched children get raped and watched women get sodomized and they turned their head and men sleeping with men and women sleeping with women and we started turning our heads, scratching, counting our money, trying to figure out how much money we could get. And God said, I'm sick and tired of this mess. He said, I'm going to shut it down. When everything goes black, God said, shut it down. He said, the stench has gone up before my nostrils. He said, I'll never destroy the earth again, but God will reset all things. Yes. He will shut it down. And God is saying, what you have been seeing is me shut down and reset. No more defilement. I prophesy that the pure places of God find itself back into the house of God. That we're able to prophesy out of pure dimensions. I prophesy that the prophets who are coming forth now, that they won't compromise. That you will know that they are more with you than against you. That you won't feel the pressure to perform for people, but that you will keep your prophetics pure. That you will find yourself saying, if it's just me, that you won't find yourself even getting in error. Like even Elijah did, thinking that there was nobody left but him. God said, I got 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee. There are prophets right now I'm speaking to out of Russia, out of China. You have no idea who God has raised up, even in the warfare of what's happening in Bethlehem, even what's going on in Iran. They are prophets that God has raised up over the nations. You've got to get a global perspective and see God bigger than your circumstance that brings God into your circumstances and make it shift. I'm telling you, Hannah, you are about to give birth to something that's going to reset the pure places, that's going to call prophets to want again prophesy, that's going to take them out of caves and out of dungeons. There was something coming because when Samuel came along, he lived in the house of the Lord where people going to get hungry and thirsty to just lay on the altar again and come to the church where we were left the altars and we were left the house of God. But I hear God say, I'm causing a regathering and I'm saying get back on the wall and build for there is a new disbursement that is coming for a new dispensation and a new era with apostolic governance on it. No more raping, no more taking advantage, no more robbing, but I'm going to disperse to my people in equal portion. I'm going to give them the portion that I call them to have and nobody won't rob it from you this time. Nobody won't steal it from you. You won't be overlooked. But God said, I'm going to cause there to be an army that will walk in synchronization of the spirit and they will not break rank. The Lord is talking about, it's a time to arise. It is a time for you to get up. 
Feel the birthing pains. Feel the stress. But don't you stop pushing. It may hurt you, but you keep on pushing. You may feel like it's over, but I tell you what's coming out of you is greater than what you are living in right now. Don't you discount this moment and this diagnose what's happening in your life. I just wanted to give you a word from the Lord because I heard God speaking to me today. And he didn't have just us on his mind. He had you on his mind. He wants you to know today that what you've been feeling are the birthing pains of greatness. You can't think the way you used to think. You gotta lead my small-minded people. You gotta lead people who won't let you write your book. You gotta lead people that every time you tell them something, they try to kill it. Dream killers. You got to lead those who are mudslingers. You got to lead people who are in your life that laughs at everything you try to do because they can't see you for where you're going because they're too stuck in where you were. But God said, I'm bringing people that's gonna be able to prophesy you right into your future. Greatness is your portion. I decree and declare there is a new allotment. I decree and declare money, prosperity. That which is owed to you, that which is due to you, it shall come. I decree and declare apostolically that things are busting forth in your yes. life. And you will not be in the same position you are right now. You won't be in the next year because we're coming to the end of the year. And God said, August market, it will be the month of manifestation. I will give birth. I will cause things to come forth. Long awaited dreams are going to manifest. Deals are going to be signed. Checks in the mail. You're going to get your healing. You're going to walk around with new organs. God is going to give you your breath back. You're going to be able to breathe again. You're going to be able to live again. I prophesy you out of every stuck place, every bound place. I'm telling you, this is your year of success. If you've never known, he said this is a year of new beginnings. And if he prophesied at the beginning of the end, the beginning of the year, he said I'm bringing it to the end, the eighth month, that you will see the fulfillment of the new beginning. So I prophesy to you. As you are listening to me right now, all of you in here, all of you, I prophesy that you will see the manifestations of a new beginning, that you would feel it, that you would grab hold to. All you got to do is be willing to keep stretching because where you are is not who you are. God has greater on his mind for you right now. So I prophesy to you that you begin to believe it, that you begin to believe it, that you begin to believe it, that you begin to believe it. Not, yeah, no, 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 no. That you begin to believe it. The Bible says believe the prophet and you will prosper. In other words, you will be able to come into what I'm saying because you can see it. All I need you to do is come into the prophetic dimensions. See what I'm saying. See what I'm saying because heaven agenda for you. If you can hear me, I'm talking to you. If you tune into this Facebook page, I'm talking to you. Not just your cousin, not just your best friend. I'm talking to you, woman of God. I'm talking to you, man of God. I'm talking to the millennials of the nation. I'm talking to a young breed, a generation that is about to run and not look back. I'm talking to the Y generation. We got to merge ourselves back together to create a stronghold. We need those that have been a part of what God birthed out in four generations. We got to create a stronghold because if you can get four generations, you can lock down a generational stronghold. And the enemy knows this, but if we can go back and get now the baby boomers and we can raise them back with us and get the millennials and we can now set them in place and get that Y generation, if we can get everything, he's the God of generations and what he's doing now. It will be connected to generations to come. And I will not say I will do this. I will not allow the enemy to use us anymore, any longer to leave anybody out and leave anybody behind. I call you forth. I say connect with us. We are building a new model. August 2nd through August 5th. It's not what you see. It's coming out of the glory dimension. And you are a part of it. If you're uncomfortable, you are part of it. If you're frustrated, you are part of it. If you're aggravated, you are part of it. If you're walking in excitement, you are part of it. If you can feel something leaping in your belly while I'm talking, you are part of it. If you now have been getting yourself to a place where you say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, you are part of it. God is looking for you, Hannah. God is calling you, Abraham, because you're in the days of mega, and God wants to make your name great. So, Father, we just thank you. I thank you for everybody that has listened at the sound of my voice. I thank you for those that have tuned in. I thank you, God, that they will not just take this and hear this as a tickling message to their ear, but let them have heard from the holy mountains of heaven that these are the days that God is saying, I'm setting apostolic mantles in place to create a governance over your life that what you give birth to this time, it will remain. It will not be aborted. It will not be, I'm sick and tired of doing this and it don't happen. But this is the year that you're able to see before we say happy new year. We're coming to the 
the ending of a beginning. And what God said at the beginning of the year, we should see at the end of the year, the beginnings, the new beginnings of Mecca. We will see it at the end. That when we say Happy New Year, as we come into Rosh Hashanah, we will say Happy New Year out of what God has downloaded in us for greatness. As we come into our new year, we're going to come loaded. We're going to come with something. We're going to come holding what God said is ours. We're not going to walk around with broken dreams and empty promises. But there is going to be now the promise fulfilled and you holding what God says belong to you. I speak it over you. I pray it over you. I prophesy over you. This is your time. This is your season. This is your moment. Don't you miss it. Don't let the brokenness cause your waters to be bitter because God is birthing something out of wounds. I pray you've heard me. I pray you've received the word and I pray that you bless. Join us. Jesus people proclaim at our intensive apostolic and prophetic intensive, August 2nd through the 5th, 1839 West Hillsboro Boulevard. I have one of my powerful sisters that's gonna be with me tomorrow. We're gonna to Facebook Live. We're gonna tear this thing open and break it down. Apostle Kim Daniels is coming on live with me. Please stay tuned. We're gonna get the generals. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. Everybody I know can't get here, but we want everybody to receive the word of the Lord. As much as you can hear, share, share, share. Let's activate wounds together. Let's get everybody in birth and position to push out what God says belong to us now. You're gonna hold it. I promise you, it is the days of the mega release. I speak the blessings. I pray it over you in Jesus' name. I'm going to get with my prophetic company. We got to pray. We got warfare here to do. I thank you for joining in. I love you so much. Stay tuned. There is so much more God wants to say and do through your life. You are the sign and the wonder. Go out. Make miracles. I love you. God bless you. Prophet Cynthia. 